Now we can all point the finger very easily at companies like Dua and Alexandria and other very, very obvious clone companies, and we do. Uh. But what's surprising is that there have been many cases of established and recognised fragrance or fashion brands that have themselves cloned other established and recognised fragrance brands, which is pretty naughty. Now some might just be a little bit of a coincidence, a little bit of an accident, but some really know what they're doing. Especially the number three, two and one in this list. In fact, you better strap yourselves in and get ready for that because those three are some of the wildest stories in the entire fragrance industry. So stick around for that. But at least with companies like Dewey, you know where you are with them. It's quite overt what they're doing and there's nothing really mysterious about it. Although I'll tell you what is a bit mysterious. What is quite mysterious is the fragrance clone brand Monarch that although they state that they have got nothing to do with Dua, have got, near enough, the exact same bottle designs, extraordinarily similar website design, the exact same written disclaimer word for word on both websites, the exact same cart system, and a completely identical checkout system. But that's probably just a coincidence and probably a topic for another video. Anyway, having said all of that, here are the 10 most infamous industry-created fragrance clones. Number 10, Lunarossa Carbon copies Christian Dior Sauvage. Okay, now if you're anything like me, dashingly handsome, a creative genius, incredibly intelligent, and my one defining quality, incredibly humble then you might think Sauvage in itself is sort of a patchwork clone of Aventus, Bleu de Chanel, and Liquid Sheet Metal. I really do not like Sauvage, and it has always smelt to me like a weird metallic mess of talcum powder and ambroxin, but whatever. Francis de Marchi, who is a very good perfumier, all things considered, and who not only reinvigorated Dior with his creations, also did my two favourite Aqua de Palma colonias. Intenza, with the help of Alberto Morias, and Pura, but he made this monstrosity and it was a huge hit. It was simply a matter of when, not if, a designer brand would clone this. And it was Prada who got the first big mainstream clone or interpretation of Dior Sauvage in, with a flanker to their already successful Luna Rossa. Luna Rossa Carbon. Both were really quite similar, but I and many others actually personally prefer Luna Rossa Carbon. I think that Daniela Andrea, instead of trying to hide the metallic smell in her composition, instead tried to incorporate it more. I remember the training that we got on it. We were told that Daniela was inspired by the smells of an industrial factory that her father worked at and wanted to recreate that smell. Is that true? Well, that's certainly what we got told in training and it could go towards explaining why it seems to have a clearer emphasis on the metallic accord. Either way, Lunarossa Carbon was also a hit, and although noticeably inspired by Sauvage, it's able to stand on its own and garner its own unique fan base. Number nine, Versace Pour Homme copies Chanel Allure Homme Sport. As previously discussed, Allure Homme Sport was a hit and it made some good money and had very positive reviews apart from notorious fragrance critic Luca Turin pictured here doing a TED talk on how he feels it's just downright disgusting that human beings can experience emotions such as joy and happiness. Jacques Polge, father of hashtag mad lad Olivier Polge, perfumed Alorum Sport and on its release presumably Versace smelt it and thought to themselves yeah let's do a bit of that lads. You see, Versace knew that lighter, woody aquatics and aromatic citrus styles of fragrances were in fashion, seeing as they had had a really good success in the release of Versace Man Eau Fraiche. In my personal opinion, Versace Eau Fraiche is, in, is one of the top three woody aquatics of all time, but that's an, another video. So they basically wanted to do it again, and they had the money to hire the biggest daddy of woody aquatic citruses in the game. That man would be 
good old Alberto more e yas queen he decided to make a fragrance strikingly similar to allure on sport the opening was a lot more aromatic yes that's true and it didn't have the striking vanilla warmth that allure on sport has in the middle of this fragrance especially the aldehydic marine citrus and woody combination is uncanny the similarity is so shocking that two hours in it starts to get a little bit difficult to decipher just which fragrance is which. So much so that Versace Pour On has 483 votes in the This Fragrance Reminds Me Of column on the Allure Homme Sport for Grantica page. My personal thoughts is that I prefer Allure Homme Sport. I love Allure Homme Sport as everybody knows. And to me, that vanilla with all of the orange and aldehydic notes is just simply second to none. Gorgeous. Number eight, Intoxicated Killian copies Angel Men by Terry Mugler. This was just downright bizarre and nearly sent Fragrantica into a meltdown or fully fledged civil war. But with less Robert Downey Jr. versus Chris Evans fighting over the moral and ethical implications of super beings' freedom of movement, but more Russell Brand versus Captain Jack Sparrow fighting over shades of eyeliner. This smells so like Angel Men people would say, no, it smells nothing like Angel Men. Others would say, this smells better than Angel Men. And my personal favorite, extraordinarily condescending comment, this is a huge update for Moogler fans. Yes, Moogler fans, get out of the sodding sewer with your synthetic tosh and get a real job and live a life that you could actually be proud of. The scent itself was indeed similar to Angel Men in a big way, mostly because of the coffee and tar-like accord it did indeed have that wispy candy floss scent that Angel Men delivered, but was admittedly a lot more natural. It didn't have the synthetic fizz and harshness that most of the Angel Men's can give. This is copying and cloning done right, in my opinion. This is looking at an already established composition and going, how can we update this? What can we do? How can we take it to the next level? This isn't necessarily cloning, this is more rebooting a fragrance on a niche stage. Number seven, John Paul Gaultier's Corcorico copies L'Instant de Guerlain, au extrême. We've already spoken about this on 10 fragrance flops, but this is a fragrance that caused controversy in almost every way, from its marketing campaign, the hype that it created, and the fact that it was mostly compared to L'Instant de Guerlain, au extrême, which had done it far better. The most notable similarity was the cocoa and patchouli combination, which was the crux of the success of L'Instant de Guerlain au Extreme. But in Corcorico, that combination was admittedly pleasant, but it was also a bit weird. Corcorico honestly smells as though you've got like a really nice chocolate bar and then you just smother it in wet soil. The comparisons to the far more popular and revered L'Instant de Guerlain au Extreme really went towards this having such a short term in stores. Number six, Montal Red Vetiver copies Hermes, Tour de Hermes. Tour de Hermes, or more commonly known as John Claude Eleanor's thought experiment of what if oranges, instead of being grown on trees and were considered as fruits, smell instead as though they were considered vegetables like potatoes and came out from the ground, was strangely groundbreaking. Lauded and loved, and although it did not receive the heights of popularity like Sauvage Aventus and the like, it has always been a genuine fragrance community darling that has done very well for itself. People love it. People claim that it's indeed a true masterpiece. Montal, which is an interesting company to say the least, whose mission statement seems to be the same as the fictional sweet company Bertie Bott's Every Flavoured Beans from Harry Potter, wants to do the same thing, but with Aoud combinations. They started off sensible with Aoud flowers, Aoud saffron, and Aoud rose petals. But then they got progressively more and more abstract and non sequitur, like Aoud Lagoon. What? Aoud Melody and Aoud Shiny. I personally can't wait for Aoud Grief, um, Aoud Pavement, and Aoud Existential Crisis.
so it was strange when Red Vetiver appears. First of all, it doesn't even have any oud. That's blasphemy at this point, and it smelt near enough exactly like Tour de Hermes. To get really technical about it, sure, with Red Vetiver, there is a less striking orange note. But an orange note is still there, and the dry down is arguably smoother, with less of the grain and grunginess of the dirty, earthy orange. Some people have even said that they actually prefer this over Tour de Hermes. Number five, two on two, Sexy Men copies Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamal. Carolina Herrera, up until recently, only had one clear hit, and that was 2 on 2. But then my good friend, German spinning machine, Jeremy Fragrance, who has recently been scientifically investigated to see if the potential energy generated from his spins could power a small village in Austria, came onto the internet and stated about CH Men, Hickory Dickory Duck, this fragrance will get you fuck generated a whole entire new interest in Carolina Herrera fragrances, albeit presumably from adolescent boys who think that buying fragrances get you more pussy than being a volunteer at Big Cat Rescue, the stupid bastards. But before then, 212 was really their only true moneymaker. They decided to do something that was eerily similar to Lamel. It smelled like Lamal that had just gone through a hellish two-year divorce, mental breakdown, and midlife crisis all at the same time, and just decided to go and have a coke-filled two-week bender in Blackpool. But if you want a less sophisticated, more promiscuous, more shallow version of Lamal, it's always good to know that there is that option. Number four, Sean John copies Millicent Imperial. Now, saying that Sean John is an established and recognised fashion brand is like saying that Kim Kardashian is an established and recognised film actress because she was in Disaster Movie, aptly named, and whatever this was. And P. Diddy has even won some awards for his clothing. And why wouldn't he? I mean, just... Just look at that. Just... Just look at it. Anyway, me and P. Diddy probably don't share too much in common, but we do have one thing in common, our love for Millicene Imperial. His love was so great that he basically asked the perfumiers, could you make it smell like I'm wearing Millicene Imperial whilst I'm at a party, drunk off my tits on rum and eating Haribo Cola Sweets? David Appel, Pierre Negrin, Orlean Gouchard, and finally, Caroline Sabas probably looked at him and all replied, um, I guess. And that they did. Unforgivable became, strangely actually, one of the more financially successful hits on this list. And it did so well that it even won a bloody Fifi award. At this point, P. Diddy probably thought to himself, I've got this fragrance lark, really, really sorted out, mate, it's in the bag. And went on to make many other fragrances that all crashed and burned horribly. Sean John Unforgivable is actually one of my favourite fragrances. It was one of the fragrances that really got me into this hobby very seriously. So although I enjoy taking the mic a lot, it has to be said that it is a very good fragrance. It's something that I enjoy and it does indeed have a very special place in my heart. Now we get to these three. What I do is put the kettle on, get a cup of tea, and sit yourself back down and buckle up. You see, these next three fragrances are all interconnected with each other, drawn over a long span of nearly 25 years. The story of trusts being formed, being broken, egos, companies getting caught in crossfire, and ultimately, revenge. And if all of this is true, it might blow your bloody mind. Number three, Mont Blanc Explorer copies Aventus Creed. Now I know what you're going to say. <laughs> oh boy, an Aventus clone. What's so special about that? I mean, there were probably four Aventus clones released today, with fragrance companies literally opening on the basis that they can provide to you an Aventus clone. Aventus was phenomenally huge. People say, oh, people don't know about Aventus. 
outside of YouTube, that is just so not true. Even in the niche world, Aventus has had its clones, BlondeNumber9.com and Terenze Orion, but in the mainstream designer world, Aventus haven't been cloned. Why? Sure, you could say that Savage had similarities, but it wasn't a clone. And the BlondeNumber9.com and Orion weren't complete rip-offs. But then, Mont Blanc Explorer comes, and it's just so obvious. The bloody balls of it. The similarities are staggering. It's airing far more on the citrus side, yes, but it's so obvious to anyone with a nose how similar they are. Mont Blanc Explorer creeps its way up the fragrances that remind me section on the Aventus for Grantica page. Why is it that Mont Blanc not only ripped off the design iconography, but they did one of the most blatant fragrance clones ever made? Was it a coincidence? Was it a marketing choice? Were they being greedy, you know, and wanted a bit of that Aventus money? Understandably, everybody does at the moment. Maybe they did it because they knew exactly what they were doing. Maybe to get back at somebody. Maybe they had a little score to settle with Creed. Number two, original Santal copies Mont Blanc Individual. So here's the deal. In 2003, Mont Blanc Individual is released. It's a good, decent hit. People say it's like a more grown-up version of Yop Ohm with the raspberry note, but it's mostly its own creation. It sold well. People liked it. It was about 23 to 25 pounds. Maybe 30 to 40, 45 dollars. In 2005, Creed, with a history of releasing only light citrus fragrances, aromatic fougeres, fragrances your dad wear, Suddenly, they release this fragrance that smells like Yope Ohm. And people are like, what the hell? There's confusion. Luca Torin nearly dies from several strokes and then hurling himself into the sun. Riots in the streets. What the hell? What is Creed doing? They release this youthful, fun-loving fragrance. People only in the past few years completely realized that this smells exactly, and I mean exactly like Mont Blanc Individual. So much so that the this fragrance reminds me of section between the two fragrances on Fragrantica is over 600. One of the highest numbers in the website's entire history. And naturally, many people thought that Mont Blanc had copied Creed. People still make this mistake today because Creed don't copy people. People copy Creed. Interestingly, Creed have done two copies. One is Individual and the other is Mugler Cologne. Both were called by their ingredients, vetiver and santal, and to put salt on the wound, they both called theirs original. You cheeky buggers. Now, there isn't too much of a story with vetiver and Mughal Cologne, but there is with santal and individual. Individual was hurt by santal. People thought that santal was the copy. Individual was taken out of stores, it was missing from store indexes when I was working at House of Fraser in Manchester. And it looked as though Individual was on its way out. And the only fragrance would be left would be Original Santal by Creed. However, one man did save it. You can say what you like about Jeremy Fragrance, but if it wasn't for him, Individual might not be around and you'd have to pay four or five times as much for the exact same scent. Mont Blanc may have potentially made Explorer as a receipt for what Creed had done. So why did Creed do it? Why would they have wanted to make a clone of Mont Blanc Individual? Was it Mont Blanc, the company they were targeting? Or was it the guy who perfumed Individual? Well, that man's name was Pierre Bourdon. He created Individual solely on his own. But 15 years previously, he'd also made a fragrance, one of the most popular and enduring fragrances of all time. And that is what number one is. Number one, Davidoff Coolwater copies Creed Green Irish Tweed. So the story goes like this. There are two stories, actually. One is more plausible, but doesn't quite fit the timeline. But let's get to the most common one. 
This may be shocking, but Creed have the reputation that they do not, in fact, make their own scents. They get other perfumiers to create them, but still take the sole ownership and credit. They may have an initial idea, but they will get help. There were rumours that both Olivier Cresp and Jean-Claude Elner helped making Aventus, but you can't prove it, there's no evidence. If these people do help or assist, they sign away their name to a non-disclosure act, and that is the end of that. But back in the late 70s and early 80s, Creed were, despite being 200 years old, new on the public market. They had mostly been bespoke work, but commercially broad spectrum sales, they had not done that. So they were untested in the waters. So they hired, allegedly, Kia Bourdain to help create Green Irish Tweed. Now, this is on Base Notes. If you go to the official ba Base Notes website and you look at Green Irish Tweed, there he is. There's Pierre Bourdain as one of the perfumiers. He's credited for making it along with Olivier. So he works as hard as he can and makes it, and he does it. He helps Olivier make Green Irish Tweed. But in the months before release is told, no one can ever know that you made this. And for an artist to be told this, that your work will never be recognised as your own, and certainly if he hadn't been made aware of that in the first place, that can be a devastating blow. So the story goes, is that he gets angry, and he goes to Davidoff, who wanted to make a new fragrance with this idea, and boom, cool water is born. Olivier feels betrayed, and this sequence of events starts to occur. But there's a wilder version of this story. If you thought that Bois de Portugal or Green Irish Tweed was the first Creed fragrance to be released onto the market, you'd be wrong. It was actually Zest Mandarin Pamplemousse, my personal second favourite Creed of all time, but that's another video. The rumour is, is that Olivier wanted to use old Creed formulations for release. Old formulations that James Henry Creed and Henry Creed and all those forefathers and previous generations had made, but vaulted. This story goes that things like Neroli Sauvage, Border Port Portugal, Royal Water, and Green Irish Tweed are all based on these old formulations that used to be put on leather gloves for the highest level of clientele. But there were three in particular that he wanted made. Royal English Leather, the first ever Creed fragrance made, and that was done. You can watch reviews of that by Stephen from Red Lessons and the late My Mickers. That's a fragrance that was released for a short time. The second fragrance was Green Irish Tweed. The third one is odd. Some people say it was the inspiration for Orange Spice, which was a creed that was developed in private in 1950. But it's also reportedly very like Kuros by Yves Saint Laurent. And indeed, Orange Spice has similarities to Kuros. Anyway, it is said that Pierre Bourdain worked as an apprentice at Roar Bertrand and worked with a group of perfumiers given the task of converting the royal approved leather fragrances, these formulas, into real perfumes. This may have been done with the complete agreement that Creed would retain the ownership of the formula and have it protected by contracts that would prevent any mention of work that they did. Things in this version start to get a little bit fuzzy. But apparently there's an argument around 1978 or 1979, and he's done the work necessary to help with Orange Spice re-release and Green Irish Tweed, and he leaves. Maybe not on the best of terms. Remember I said that this Orange Spice fragrance is very similar, apparently, to Kuros by Yves Saint Laurent? Who do you think perfumed Kuros by Yves Saint Laurent? That's right, Pierre Bourdain. This story doesn't fit quite as well why would they have waited six years to release Green Irish Tweed? But the idea that Pierre Bourdain was involved in the early history of Creed becoming a public perfume house, being trusted with these formulas, and him leaving and using two of them for his own gain, where he would get the credit, that would have been enough to piss anybody off and then strike back. These were the 10 most infamous industry created fragrance clones of all time. Did I miss any out? Please let me know. And what did you think to all of that? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm the Fragrance Apprentice. If you, if you enjoyed this content, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Until I see you next, I'm the Fragrance Apprentice. I'm out.